Aloha, everyone. Ronnie Landis here, the host of the Holistic Life Mastery podcast show. And we have another exciting and intriguing, super sophisticated, super fun interview from our remastered interview series that I took from the archives and my old interviews from a number of years ago from my old podcast show. And we're bringing it to you guys. This is some incredible gemstones, and you guys are going to love this one. So before we get into that, I want to direct your attention, as always, to the Holistic Health Mastery Program, which is my online nutrition certification program, and really just an incredible platform, an intuitive navigational platform for holistic health and advanced beginners and advanced nutrition uh, studies in the fields of raw living foods, superfoods, tonic herbalism, detoxification, hormones, neurological health, um, even child development and pregnancy, cleansing and uh, nutrition, and so much more. I mean, so much more than that. It's a 125 video series, and it's just incredible. So I really recommend that you guys go to holistichealthmastery.com and on with our show. So this interview is with a very good friend of mine and a colleague from Connecticut. Her name is Lisa Wilson, and she runs the Raw Food Institute. It's a healing center in Connecticut that actually about three or some odd years ago, I went over there to speak at. It's just an amazing setup and what she's doing and how she's applying the wisdom of essentially the Hippocrates system and the Ann Wigmore therapy, the juice cleansing, the sprout cleansing, and really just high vibrational green-based raw living foods. And they're doing some incredible work. And Lisa is not only a super sparkly, happy, healthy mother and and, uh, family woman, but she's just a powerhouse. I mean, the more I've gotten to know her over the years, I'm constantly impressed with both her humility, her curiosity, and her incredible passion in, in like relentless drive to bring out the truth about what's going on in our food supply, what's going on in the politics around food and health. And I had a conversation with her uh, a number of months back in Sedona where we both spoke at the Raw Living Expo. And we were talking about some of the controversial issues going on with all these natural alternative doctors that have shown up dead and all. and, And she knew as I did, some of the background information and the corollary behind all that. But that's not really what this interview is about. Maybe we'll do another one with her very shortly. But this interview is amazing. I'm re-listening it to it over, not listened to it in about two years, and it's so relevant. So much stuff is coming back up for me regarding my research in Lyme's disease and Graves' disease and autoimmune conditions, neurological, nervous system, systemic issues in the body, and some of the really basic therapies that are universal, that, they, that things that every single person has access to in some very niche um, technologies, let's say nutritional technologies that are coming back on my radar. And I'm just super stoked for all of you to listen to it. And even for me to start incorporating some of these basic truths back into my strategy. So without further ado, enjoy this segment with Lisa Wilson. everyone, this is Ronnie Landis, and we're bringing you another edition of the Expanded Health and Human Potential radio show. So today, like always, I have a very special guest online with us, and she is the founder and director of the Raw Food Institute in Connecticut, which houses people from all over the world to come over and do transitionary um, transitionary diets through raw food. And it's a, it's a healing institute to help educate people and to help them get on a better path and to 
uh, transform their lives essentially. And I'm, I have the honor of bringing Lisa Wilson on with us. How are you doing, Lisa? I'm fantastic. Thank you for having me, Ronnie. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. So I wanted to, uh, I have a whole host of questions for you and I really wanted to expose you to a lot of my viewers that may or may not know who you are and what you're doing. And, um, I know, I know you're doing so many amazing things. I know the momentum for this movement has been, uh, just expanding like, like at a uh, rapid speed. You know what? I completely agree with that. Um, I'm not entirely sure why. It's interesting because I bought my juice machine, my first juice machine, probably over 20 years ago. And mm. I was, you know, turned on to it way back then. But I hear you right now. It's just the right place at the right time. Everybody, I always say, knows somebody or knows somebody who has profoundly changed their life or healed their life with green juice therapy, which is a class that I love to teach. It's become my signature talk or, or with raw foods and, and everybody, you know, you sort of now can picture somebody in your mind that eats raw food, a lot of raw foods or all raw foods and their skin is glowing and they're happy and they're fit and they look fantastic. And you, you know, people look at that and say, I want a piece of that. Hmm. And so it's really a direction that people are, like I said, being turned on to. It's exciting and thrilling. Yeah, it is really exciting, and I know it's really exciting for people like me and my generation that are coming up in it, and um, it, it's becoming a normal thing for the most part. Not everywhere, of course, but it's 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 uh, bleeding out into different areas of our our society, and people are really getting turned on to it. I see it every single day, and like you said. Um, it, it just brings out your your higher faculties. Your your it brings out the best in people, really, from every every level, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically. I mean, um, and that's something we're going to talk talk about a little later in this interview. Is that uh, how it just brings out the beauty qualities in people? Sorry, I was taking a drink of water. Well, I'm glad that you said that because <laughs> I'm glad that you said that because I, I can't I couldn't agree more. I think that you know, to start getting people into this lifestyle, it starts to clear their thoughts, to clear them emotionally. And honestly, that part is sort of unexpected. They maybe just want to lose ten pounds or they maybe um, you know, wanna I don't know, help their arthritis or help their diabetes. And then there's this enlightenment, like, wow, wow, this is amazing. Um, I'm so much clearer. I have so much energy. I'm so mm -hmm. much focused and more focused. And I always say that, and this is the truth. My life has turned out completely different because of what I eat. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more on that one. Same with me. So I, I'm let's get let's kick it off. I want to know why did you start this raw food institute? Oh, that's a good question. Well, let me back you up. Let me go back 20 years and tell you why I bought my first juice machine. Um, <laughs> I had a family friend who was diagnosed with colon and ovarian cancer at the same time. And I'm from a real small town in northern Minnesota, 600 people, and not really nobody's really turned on there to raw foods, let's say. Um, and so we'd sort of heard through the grapevine that she was opting to do, to choose not to do surgery, chemotherapy or radiation, that she was choosing to do raw foods. And my sister was friends with her daughter and I would hear the stories of all the vegetables in her, you know, in her kitchen and all the garlic. And, and 18 months later, I, then I, you know, got the news that she had healed her body from cancer. And I was in my twenties at the time. And I was so profoundly moved by this that I thought, okay, if she can heal her body with cancer, imagine what we can do with the power of prevention. Mm -hmm. So that's why I started juicing. You know, I, I didn't know anything about nutrition at the time. I think I was still eating Cheetos, but I was juicing <laughs> <laughs> um, back then. And now I wouldn't touch stuff, of course. But so then when I... I when my daughter, when my youngest daughter was two, and she's now nine, she, I went back to nutrition school um, to integrative nutrition and and got certified. And then I started working at an integrative medical practice in Washington D.C. And it's the largest integrative medical practice on the East Coast. 
Um, and the doctors there are, are very Western priced and, and I have nothing against that. I think Western price movement has really brought us as a society a very long way. Um, but the people that were being referred to me were, were very sick with many different things, with diabetes, with Lyme disease, with cancers. Um, and I had to dig a lot deeper. I had to really go back to what I knew would help them. And that was raw food. Although I didn't know how to do it. I know I knew what needed to be done. I knew I needed to do wheatgrass and barley grass and sprouts, many kinds of sprouts from soil sprouting to jar sprouting, fenugreek, mung beans, uh, sunflower, pea shoots. Um, but I, I didn't know how to do it. So I had to obtain the skill set to learn how to do these things, the therapeutic things that people needed. And I realized, Ronnie, that there are very few places in the world that train people on how to do this. So I started studying some of the original um, doctors who were doing the groundbreaking work on this, people that um, you know were the, the generations before us, like Dr. Kelly, Dr. Wigmore, mm-hmm. Dr. Gerson, found lots of similarities in what they were doing. Some differences, yes, but lots of similarities. And I decided I really had to choose one protocol for the Raw Food Institute, and we chose the Ann Wigmore protocol. And the reason I chose that above the other ones, not because it's better or superior, they're all fantastic, um, but because I felt it was doable. You know, I didn't really know anybody that did the other therapies without having to hire somebody because there's a lot of labor. There's a lot of labor in all of them. Let's, you know, be clear about that. But I thought this one was more doable. And I love the living piece. I love the living sprout piece. I love the pea shoots and the sunflower sprouts mm-hmm. and the, the grass juices that are so therapeutic, almost like an herb. Um, and so anyway, you know what I did? I started using these therapies, and I mean raw food therapies. I call it therapies because it really is, without, without sharing what I was doing with the doctors. <laughs> And, and a funny thing happened, though, Ronnie, um, people, I mean, beyond my wildest imagination graduating from nutrition school, what I thought I would see the results that I did, and people started getting better, I mean, dramatically better. You know, for example, one of my first people that I worked with doing this, the Anwigma protocol, um, and I was doing one-to-one at the time, and I don't, don't do much of that anymore, but he had a tumor on his eye, and it was 28 millimeters, he was blind in his left eye, and it was... You know, they couldn't do radiation on him because it was too close to his brain. They couldn't guarantee that he might be blind in both eyes or brain damage. So he had to look for alternative things, and and so he chose this. And about, we started working together in August or September, and, and about um, Thanksgiving, I think, he went and had a scan, and it was still 28 millimeters. And then in February, he had an, uh, another scan, and... He drove through a snowstorm. I was living in D.C. at the time. He drove through a snowstorm to deliver, deliver to my door with his wife and his daughters his cleared scan. I mean, in a very short period of time, it was gone. And, and that, I mean, that was just the first. That's just one example. But, you know, I've never seen anybody that does this program, and I don't know if you have either, but I've never seen anybody with two type, diabetes, type 2 diabetes not be able to completely reverse it. And... And, you know, lots of cancers, you know, in addition, and I'm not suggesting this as a standalone, but in addition to what they're doing with holistic doctors, I'm not a doctor, I don't give medical advice, but I do this with whatever they're doing with the doctor. And, you know, some choose to go all holistic and they're using far infrared therapies and they're using hyperbaric oxygen and they're, they're using other food therapies like B17 or laetrile, mm-hmm. apricot kernels and aloe vera and all these wonderfully powerful things in combination can really make a huge impact on, on your health. Absolutely. Um, and that's incredible. What, what kind of, um, so I think you alluded to it a little bit, but maybe we can go in a little more. What kind of results have you been seeing um, with some of the people that have been coming to you? Well, you know, across the board, I'll pick Lyme disease, and mm, that's a big, that's you know, a big one. Yeah, Lyme, Lyme has co-infections, and you know, Lyme is complicated. They create biofilms, and so it's really actually difficult and a challenge to get at the Lyme. But there are specifically some enzymes that we know eat these biofilms, these particular biofilms. And what I noticed about Lyme is that I've had people come to me that have had 
a variety of treatments from all different doctors. I mean, people that have been with holistic and conventional doctors for years, they've done IV antibiotics, they've done the Bruner's protocol with herbal treatments, they've done Chinese herbs, you name it, they've done it, and they're still completely fatigued, completely just, you know, because Lyme can settle in the brain, Lyme can settle in the lungs, it really just depends on where, you know, I say Lyme, they build houses and, and have children, that's what they do in your bodies. Mm-hmm. So... What I see with the people with Lyme is an ability with raw foods to get their life back. Um, It doesn't necessarily mean, well, it might mean that the Lyme goes away. When you're creating an environment that's not a host environment anymore, a lot of these parasites will just leave the body. Absolutely. But the first thing that happens, you know, I had a woman with Lyme come through the last one in April and she came in, I mean, literally, she said, you guys, if if I don't show up for class, I've fallen asleep. I have a difficult time going more than eight hours maximum without sleep. Usually it's four. And she came in, you know, was kind of slumped over through the classes and throughout the day. But by the end of the day, her eyes were bright. She was perky. <clears throat> she easily sit through classes. And this is, in, this is in seven days, Ronnie. It's insane what we can see in seven days. Mm-hmm. And, and that's not, I mean, on my website, on the first page, another woman, Tiffany, who comes in and speaks often because she came in with Lyme as well. Um, on day five, on Friday, she came to the back and she said, you know, it's like, first of all, she asked if she could help. She said, I got up before my alarm. She said, I've never, um, that's never happened before. And, you know, she in, in the video testimonial that's on my website, she said, I feel better in seven days on raw food than I did in seven years of holistic treatments. Mm, I believe that. It's fantastic. And that's just yeah. mine. You know, weight loss is a huge one. I had Franny, and I, I can say their names if they've given me permission. So all these people that I mentioned have given me permission or I have their testimonials. Um, but Franny came through in January, and then she came through again after you've been a participant, you qualify to be a, a volunteer, and that means you can help in the kitchen and learn the juicing piece. And Franny came back through in April, unrecognizable, Ronnie. She had lost 50 pounds. She looked fantastic. And I asked her, I said, well, you know, I know you've tried diets before. You've tried different things. What about this was it that clicked finally? And she said, you know, I realized through the classes that I was taking at the Raw Food Institute that what I'd been putting in your, in my body, I was no longer going to put in my body. She said I was putting chemicals and non-foods. She said it, it was such a big aha moment that I will never do that to my body again. So I see a lot of that. I see a lot of people who've tried, you know, high, carb, low carb, high protein, low protein, and you know, it doesn't stick and they gain more weight. Uh, and then finally there's that aha moment of, I only want to be clean. I feel so good. I only want, you know, this is the only home I have. It's, you know, I only want to put good things into it. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, I, I, I'm a huge fan of the idea of terrain modification. And I, I think that's really, you know, we have all these diets and all these, these kind of like, uh, I don't even, I don't even know the word for it at this point, but just all these, all these "Quote unquote programs that are sold to us um, in different in different ways, and I'm not knocking everything out there. But what I really think is getting to the root of the matter is we have to we have to modify the biological terrain that we're we're you know we have our environment hosted. And there's a lot of different, as you alluded to, there's a lot of different organisms that are residing in our um, internal terrain and they've set up a housing station for themselves. And, you know, it's really important to understand that concept. I've done a lot of, a lot of work in parasitology and toxicology and that kind of thing. And just understanding what's really going on at the root of the matter and why certain symptoms are showing up. And I really like, I really like the approach of juicing therapy as a supplemental approach for, um, you know, reducing the anaerobic uh, organisms, increasing oxygen, increasing the uh, anti-inflammatory effects, the chlorophyll, um, increasing cognitive function. And I find too, in, in when I'm working with people or when I'm studying other other um, clinical work such as yours, and definitely like in the Hippocrates Institute, Dr. Gabriel Cousins, and on and on, um, it seems to be the same the same theme 
comes about once you get get someone you get there you know i know you're a big fan of the ph miracle and the idea of um increasing our increasing alkalinity and so why don't we talk about that for just a second you know what? I am a fan of it. Um, it was so funny. I have to admit that for years I knew about the book, The PH Miracle, and I never picked it up. I thought, what's it going to teach me? I own the Raw Food Institute. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what he's talking about, but you know, I did pick it up. And what I was really blown away by, you know, I, of course, the program, you know, the protocol that he recommends is very similar, if not almost exactly the same as what we do at the Raw Food Institute as far as food. But, you know, here's a wonderful doctor, Dr. Young, who's adding things like MMS or chlorine dioxide, adding Mm -hmm. some of the therapeutic mineral salts, um, Mm -hmm. adding some of the, um, you know, the oxygen therapies. And I was thrilled. I have to tell you, when I saw chlorine dioxide, I'm a huge fan of chlorine dioxide. And, you know, for those of you listening who haven't seen the documentary by Jim Humble, Humble, um, I urge you to watch it. There's a lot of good information, scientific, solid information coming in from around the globe. Um, a lot of people believe that it's not in the United States because of the, the huge presence of the pharmaceutical companies, and, and I probably would have to agree with that one. But I'm thrilled by the research coming in, and I was honestly really thrilled to see a doctor openly talking about it because... A lot of doctors that I'm aware of, that I'm friends with, I should say, if somebody approaches them and asks them about it, they say, take it, but I didn't tell you to take it, you know, because it's yeah. still sort of under the table. It's still sort of something to <clears throat> talk about. And it should be supervised. I will say that. It's powerful, powerful stuff, and it should be supervised and used appropriately by someone who knows what they're doing. But I was a hu- I was just so thrilled to see his book, and, and I happened to, at the award ceremony that I saw you at in, in February, um, I was seated at the same table with Dr. Young, and uh, I won an award that I won. A, we won a couple awards. We won the Best Raw Vegan Retreat Center. That's right. And we also won the Medical Awareness for Raw Food. And how great is that? I'm not a medical doctor, but I am a researcher. So that mm-hmm. night, anyway, after I got my award, I grabbed Dr. Young. And I said, don't mean to talk shop, but I just got to, you know, I just have to pick your brain. I mean, how many opportunities do you have to sit at the ta- dinner table with Dr. Young? So... That was such a fun night, and I did pick his brain a little bit, and I told him how great it was, that I, how much I loved his book. So I am a huge fan of pH Miracle. Um, I do think that it's important, absolutely important. I mean, if your pH is in the toilet, you're in trouble. Not only pH, but so many things that are, you know, for example, somebody's been diagnosed with chronic fatigue or even Lyme. Um, the first question I ask, what is your vitamin D level? You know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I don't know what their vitamin D levels are. And so we have to find that out immediately. Um, you know, Mercola's, Dr. Mercola suggests that 70% of cancers can be avoided with adequate vitamin D levels alone. So how easy is that to get the vitamin D levels up? Um, yeah. And just, yeah. And that, and that, you know, that can lead into a whole, and a whole nother topic that I've been really into is um, this whole thing on on hormones and increasing our androgens and really being aware of the estrogenic pressure in our society and um, and th- this also and I don't I don't necessarily need to go in this direction but this I was talking with Wade Lightheart in a previous interview and um, we've had a lot of conversations on this how um, the raw food approach and not just the raw food approach but it's a good it's a good thing to be aware of is that over the long term it tends to be catabolic and um he was talking about how we need to be we need to eat for our function and we need to um we need to develop more of an anabolic approach to to over the long term obviously when you're detoxifying and you're cleansing and you're trying to you're trying to reverse a certain condition that's a really good time to be more catabolic um, but then he was talking about how we need to develop um, an anabolic approach um, so we can develop the growth hormones that are necessary. And I've been talking to a lot of doctors about this concept and um, just the whole hormonal symphony, just getting that dialed in. And vitamin D is critical for that. It's, it's you know, in my, my estimation, vitamin D is one of the, the key precursors for having that, having the right balance and not letting these estrogens over accumulate. Well, that is a fantastic point. And I think that, 
you know, in, in, uh, the culture outside of the holistic culture, there's still this perception that the son is bad. Right. And, you know, I can tell you what I see as a mother. Mm-hmm. Um, kids, we go to a pool because we, right. we bike the pool. We've never driven to the pool. It's, you know, several miles. It's a great bike. Um, but I see children developing, young boys developing breasts. It, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, young girls developing well, you know, in my private practice, I've had girls, their mothers come to me because they're, they start developing at the age of six. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, there is this estrogen dominance. Where is it coming from? It's coming from lots of extra additional growth hormones in the meat and dairy. It's coming right. from soy. It's coming from um, all the, the chemicals in the shampoos and the hand washes, the hand soaps, the antibacterials. Um, the plastics. The, yeah, plastic, sodium lauryl sulfate, all of these things are accumulating in our tissues. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. I've, I've kind of coined this term because I've, I've, I grew up in generation X. The next generation as in our nation mm-hmm. was generation Y. And we're, I've talked to you about this before. Now we're seeing generation sick and it's for this reason, you know, you can't go to a dinner party anymore, Ronnie, and everybody talks about what they have. Oh, my uncle was just diagnosed with this. My sister has that. My cousin, my son, blah, blah. As if this is normal, and this is so unnatural, we are designed so beautifully. We are meant and intended to live in an abundant state of health. And as a, again, as a mother, here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing the 20 and the 30-year-olds moving back in with mom and dad because they've got leaky gut, they've got Lyme, and, and our bodies, our immune system should be so robust, they should be able to fight these things off easily. Absolutely. And they're not. So <clears throat> so here's the thing. What's, gonna ha- what's going to happen as we now are changing our DNA, these children are changing their DNA, passing these new genes down to the children they have. I mean, what's going to happen in 20 years? I mean, that's, that's my main concern is what's going to happen to our children of this nation. What's going to happen to our nation? Um, the hormone issue, huge, huge, huge. Um, I was, you know, I'll give you my personal story. I was diagnosed with Graves disease 18 months ago, which is, um, way hyperactive thyroid. Mm. I'm sorry. (laughs) Uh, yeah, hyperactive. So way overactive thyroid. And I actually developed nodules on my thyroid. And I went and had a sonogram and it looked, it was behaving like Graves disease. It was not behaving like something worse. It was behaving like Graves disease. All my blood levels, even my holistic hormonal doctor said, Lisa, I won't touch you because your levels are so off the charts. I've never seen anything like this. And I don't know what ha- why this happened. I mean, stress probably was a big contributing factor, but what I did is I did two things. I got on the train to New York City and I went and saw my Chinese herbalist, Dr. Wong, who's phenomenal. I know him personally because he, you know, several of my clients attribute the healing of their stage four cancers to him, including Anne Fonfa, founder of the Annie Appleseed Foundation Project, uh, and also Dr. Steiner, author of Unforeseen Consequences. So these are both very, very well known people. And anyway, I went to see him, started a Chinese herbs, found Dr. Berkson, wonderful physician down in New Mexico. Get this. I don't know. If, are you familiar with him, Ronnie? Um, I'm familiar with the name. He has developed a protocol that's so ridiculously simple with alpha lipoic acid and low-dose naltrexone that in combination, and I can, I'm happy to send you my research on him too, but he... He has an 85% success rate with all autoimmune disease and 50% with all cancers. Now, can you imagine this? Yeah, actually. And <laughs> I happened to be speaking at the Annie Appleseed Conference last year, and, and, and he happened to be there, and I cornered him, and again, I just picked his brain for like two hours because he's so completely amazing. But it turns out alpha lipoic acid has the ability to regenerate tissues, including the liver, you know, including the thyroid, including, you know, it's great for athletes for rebuilding muscle. So I'm completely in love with alpha lipoic acid. I think it's fantastic. Um, and, and my in quote, quote, incurable Graves disease, which the, the conventional doctors I did visit too, and they wanted to remove my thyroid or give me radioactive iodine, which I declined on both of those. Cause I believe that the body has the, it's a, the ability to heal itself. And I started tapping and meditating with um, intensity, power and intensity, 
brought the right doctors into my life. And in six weeks flat, I was completely healed of my quote incurable Graves disease. Wow. That's, that is incredible. Um, it's funny you mentioned alpha lipoic acid. That's something I was thinking about a couple of weeks ago. I don't know why I was just in my head, but I didn't, I didn't really, um, I didn't really dive into it. So that's something I'm going to have to look into a little more. You know, you'll love it. I was hanging out with Elena Love at the conference we were at in, mm-hmm. in, in uh, Arizona and I turned her onto it and she's a big athlete and she keeps emailing me like how much she is loving her alpha lipoic acid. It's really, mm. once I was on it for my thyroid for about five months, I started looking down at my body and going, whoa, I mean, I've been, I didn't change my exercise plan and I started getting results in the sculpting of my muscles that in, I'm, I will be 44 this summer in my forties that I never had my entire life. Wow. That's incredible. And I do attribute it to the alpha lipoic acid. Mm, interesting. Um, that leads me to my next question because, uh, you know, I, there's a huge surge of, uh, <laughs> there's a huge surge of incredible women that, you know, let's, I'll just put it to you this way that are kind of defying the conventional discourse on aging and what, what that even means chronologically and what our kind of, uh, our paradigm is of, you know, what someone should look like and feel like at a certain age. And I, I've been really exposed to just some, some extraordinary women in their 40s, 50s, 60s, I mean, that, you know, you would never think that. And you are an absolutely radiant, beautiful woman. I want to know, what are your thoughts on turning back the clock? Well, I hope that I'm, um, you know, the person in the nursing home teaching the yoga classes. That's what I <laughs> Well, maybe I'll skip the nursing home piece. I, I think that we're meant to be healthy at any age. I you know, the funniest thing, I'll share this story. I've been doing this on stage. I actually did it at, at, in Arizona. I had written this story, and I it's a story of a young girl at the age of eight who tugs on her mother's hand as she's watching her ballet instructor dance across the stage. And she says, Mommy, when I'm 40, I'll be able to do the splits. Mm. And the mother says, laughs and discards it and says, I doubt that. And the the painful thing was in the little girl's soul she was hurt by this because it was her first you know dream that had been sort of squashed by somebody she cared about and and maybe cared about maybe when these people care for you they want you to take the safe road and it's you know they believe it's in your best interest but maybe it's not so throughout her life the little girl goes on to have certain a certain number of disappointments um And then I sort of wrap up, you know, the talk that I'm giving by doing the splits and saying she was me. Oh, wow. And, and, and I've done the splits. It's been 30 years since I've done the splits, but this year in my head, I was going to, I just, I made a decision. I made a decision. And so the message is, is that we can make a decision to be healthy at any age and the mind has to go there first. If you've already decided that your fate is sickness and illness and a wheelchair, and then that's what it is. But if you decide to choose health, if you decide to choose joy, if you decide to cho- choose to live life with passion, then those things will come screaming into your life with abundance and, and will come fast. Mm, I could not agree more with that. And I definitely have my own experience with that. And, uh, yeah, that's that's an amazing thing because we're you know we're constantly shot down from left to right in our culture from you know our parents or our leaders or our immediate influences and it, it's such it's just it's such a powerful thing for people to know that they really are empowered by how they feel and how they think and obviously how they eat and how we eat affects all these other things. It affects our, our thinking patterns. It affects how we feel emotionally. And these are the things that are really dictating our results. So I, you know, and I'm big, I'm a big student into longevity, anti-aging therapies, but, but not so much into the extension of life. Although, um, you know, 300 is my personal goal. (laughs) <laughs> um, and I, and I see it, I can see how that's going to happen, you know, 
Um, but really what it's all about is like, I, I kind of agree more with like the Taoist tonic herbalists and their kind of concept of, uh, it's not so much about how long you live, but how well you live and the quality within each day. And I, I feel like the live food piece to the whole, to the different layers of health and nutrition is really the foundation of it all because it get, it's, it allows somebody to really get their life back. I mean, I've seen so many people that are, you know, in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and then they get onto it and their whole life completely turns around, not just like the physicality, not just their physiology, but but their how they feel about themselves what a whole new a whole new corridor of possibilities just opened up to them and like you just said what they thought was impossible when they were a kid just became probable i i couldn't agree more you know i, I what you said you know the thing i really heard you say was that it's not about how long you live, but about how well you live. And I think that's completely, you know, completely accurate. I, um, you know, one of my signature talks has become, as I mentioned earlier, green juice therapy. And I always joke that I'm a grump without my green juice. And <laughs> actually on a talk show on Monday this week here called Better Connecticut. Cool. And it was sort of funny because the hosts were, I don't know, they were kind of they weren't as into green juice as I am, shall we say? Yeah. They weren't. You know, they weren't against it, of course. And it was it was new to them. It was very new to them. Yeah. But, and I, th- I crave it. I think it tastes delicious. Yeah, totally. And I think once you start, once you get it like running through your veins and through your blood, you start to feel so good mm-hmm. that you're actually craving the feeling, the high. It's a high. It's, it's a it? high. It's a natural high for sure. It's a high, and and you know. And you're happy all the time. I mean, who doesn't want to be happy all the time? I mean, I swear, if people could just try it, they would be so completely in love with it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I'm just thinking about it right now, actually. <laughs> um, very cool. Well, let's um, let's talk about this documentary that you've been working on, Generation Sick. Yes, Generation Sick. We started filming when we were out there in February, and we will be filming throughout the year. And the, the, the end point will be when we bring three families together. We were hoping it would happen this summer, but we need more time. So it will happen next summer. Mm. We'll be, I'm sorry, we'll be bringing four families together. We will be following four families around and with cameras and watching them go through three weeks of change. Um, three weeks of change, we can see dramatic results in the blood. And I'm looking for families not with serious illnesses like cancers, and not that other illnesses aren't serious, but um, things that we can really see, like diabetes going away. Yeah. Um, let me give you an example. I had, um, and I can say his name too, his name is Peter Gauthier. He's a pilot. And pilots cannot be on insulin and legally fly. It's not legal. So Peter had gone through every diabetes medication there was. They kept upping it, kept upping it. And finally, in his words, his doctor said, the jig is up. You need to get on insulin. Well, this meant for Peter the end of his career, the end of his pension, the end of his career. It was the end of everything for him. So I happened to have, and we do Raw Food Institute uh, retreats quarterly at this time. And so... I happened to have one the next week. So he went to see his doctor. He got all of his numbers. He came through a seven-day program. So it was 12 days before he got back to his doctor again. In that period of 12 days, his A1C had dropped from 9.4 to 7.2. His blood sugar was 330 when he checked in, was 110 when he left. Mm Mm-hmm. His doctors looked at the numbers, their job. I mean, he literally called me giddy from his doctor's office and said, do you have a minute? He said, they can't believe what they're looking at because with any drug, A1C levels, it's a 90 day lag period. You will not see a drop in A1C for 90 days. So because this was 12 days, his doctor said, this is medically impossible. I have no idea what you just did. So here we go. (laughs) Food. Raw foods, green juice, you know, the living foods, the sprouts, doing something that's medically impossible, stumping doctors. He got his license to fly. He's been flying for the last three years. 
Yeah, that's, I can't tell you how many times I've heard stories like this, um, mm-hmm. especially being such a student of Gabriel Cousins. It's like um, the conventional discourse is that on one end, it's, it's you know, it's we don't know what what to do about it. It's it's incurable. You need to take this uh, medication, your insulin, whatever. And on the other end, it's like this is going away in two weeks, ten days. I mean, it, it's really interesting the dichotomy of it all. It, it's completely fascinating to me, and, and exciting, and thrilling, and and this is why people are being turned on. You know. I was I lived in DC as I told you for many years and now I'm up in Connecticut where is where the retreat is now in Simsbury, Connecticut. But in DC, um, and I still go down there to teach some boot camps three times a year. But when I was there, I started teaching these green juice therapy classes and and I teach in this particular room at this medical office that, you know, if we squeeze people in, we could fit a hundred people. And by the time I left, people were telling their friends and their friends were telling their friends, I couldn't even do one class in a day. I'd have to schedule three classes in a day because I'd have hundreds and hundreds of people registering for these classes. Everybody wants to know about green juice therapy. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, that's totally awesome. I commend you. It's been fun. It's been, it's been a, a, the journey's been completely rich. I, that's all I can say. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's. It's extraordinary. It's really, it's just the beginning. I, I know you're exactly right when you say that. Yeah, yeah. Well, Lisa, this has been an absolute pr- pleasure. I learned a lot, and I know the people viewing this are going to get a lot out of this. So where, where can everyone find you? The rawfoodinstitute.com. The rawfoodinstitute.com. Make sure you use the word the. And Ronnie, I'm going to see you next month, right? Absolutely. Next month, it's uh, we're like three weeks away. Yeah. July, I think, 13th, you're coming to speak at, at the Raw Food Institute. We're actually going to hold it open to the public, so all of the participants will be able to invite their friends and family. Is it the 13th or the 7th? I think it's the 13th. I think it's the 7th. <laughs> <laughs> we might want to double check that off the air. <laughs> switch it to the seventh we're flexible well we'll fit we'll figure it out we'll talk offline <laughs> but yeah i'm i'm totally excited to be out there and to speak at the institute i have some some uh some interesting things to talk about that is not normally in my from what i've seen normally talked about in depth in in our community or just in the general health community so i think that's going to be really exciting for everybody well, I know you're going to be a great addition to our lineup. We have such a fantastic lineup of speakers. You are the star speaker this time. Aww. We also have auricular therapy coming in, which is sort of the reflexology of the ears, which is I've seen amazing things with auricular therapy and herbs and essential oils and tower gardens. And um, we just have a really, really rich curriculum this time, in addition to all of our core classes, which, of course, is the Sprouting 101 and 102 and Green Juice Therapy and um, why raw, medicinal raw, pillars of healing, therapeutic raw, you know, it's, it's a fantastic lineup and I'm so happy that you are a superstar coming in this time. Uh, well, I really appreciate that. It's going to be a lot of fun. It will be. Okay. Well, th- like I said, this has been a pleasure and, uh, thank you so much. My pleasure. You're welcome, Ronnie. All right, everyone. This has been another edition of the expanded health and human potential radio show. We'll catch you guys next time.